doing well. We are uh, right now in the book of Nehemiah, if you remember, right? And we today today we're finishing the book of Nehemiah, and tomorrow we're starting the book of Esther, Queen Esther. Yes, a beautiful story. We'll start that tomorrow. Today, let's finish the book of Nehemiah, okay? So what is it about? Let's see what happened. Due to his capable leadership, Nehemiah was appointed governor over Judah by King Artaxerxes. Today, the lesson would be about Nehemiah and his leadership. And yesterday, we looked uh, at it partially, and today, we're going to finish with it, too. Uh, he's an example of a good leader. Let's see how. The governors before Nehemiah placed a heavy burden on the people for food and wine, as well as taxing them each 40 pieces of silver. Yes, before Nehemiah, all the governors got taxes from people and people suffered because of that because it's difficult when life is difficult like in Sri Lanka right now and you have to pay a lot of taxes it's even worse Nehemiah didn't do that he didn't take any taxes from people the entire time Nehemiah served neither he nor his family ate the food portioned for the governor they didn't eat any of that food they just they bought their own food instead of um, making people work hard to get food for himself he just bought it on his own nor did he put a tax burden on the people or acquire any of their land instead he devoted himself to the work on the wall this is his prayer once the wall was finished oh lord my god please remember me with favor for all i have done for these people this was his prayer now let's see what enemies are doing here it is true, there are no longer gaps in any part of the wall. However, some of the doors in the gates have not yet been set. Send Nehemiah a message. Sandalat wants to meet at one of the villages on the plan of Ono. It is a trap, of course. So the enemies say, Nehemiah, we want to meet you. Come, let's have a meeting, they say. But they know it's a trap. They just want to kill him to get rid of him so the work would stop. Tell your master, I will stay here and finish the work on the wall. He said, he said no, I'm not going to have any meetings with you. Sanballat sent the same message four times about the meeting. On the fifth time, Sanballat and his friends changed their strategy. Let's see what they did the fifth time. Another letter they sent. Tell your master Sanballat he's making uh, these accusations up in his head. The Jews are not plotting revolt that you can report to the Persians. And I have no plans to become the king. So now they are trying to intimidate him by the lies. They say, we're going to write a letter to the king saying that you want to revolt and that uh, Nehemiah wants to become a king himself. He said, no, it's all lies. It's all wrong. This is what the enemy does. Lord, he prays, they are trying to frighten us, thinking we will become weak, too weak for the work. Now, please, God, strengthen my hands, Nehemiah prayed. Since intimidation didn't work, his enemies tried another tact. So what will they do this time? This time, it came in the form of a false priest named Shemaiah. He was the son of a close friend of Nehemiah, a false priest. What will the false priest do? Let's see. We need to meet inside the house of God and close the temple doors, said this false priest. I have discovered that men are coming by night to kill you. Should a man like me run away, asks Nehemiah, or go to the temple, go into the temple of God to hide? God has said only the high priest may enter. I will not go. Yes. Inside the temple, there was a place, the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place. Only the high priest, only one person was allowed to go inside it. He is not a priest. He is just a governor. He's not, by the law of God, allowed to go there. But this guy, he wants to trap him too. And he's saying, let's go and hide because some people want to kill you. He thinks that he would be afraid and go and hide in the temple of God and nobody would touch him there. And, here you are. and the recording stopped. Sorry, sorry. Yes, the okay. recording is continuing. Uh, which part was the last part that you heard me say? Well, um, the... What was the last part? Anyway. Yeah, they were coming to kill him. Yeah, they were about, coming to about kill him. About hiding inside the temple? Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, I will not do that because it's not according to the law. It's against the law. The man you report to would make the people question both his reverence for God and his courage, he said to this fake priest. Nehemiah persevered despite threats of violence, fraudulent reports, false prophets, nobles who refused to work and even exploited their own countrymen and disloyalty. So the enemy came in all different shapes and forms, and yet Nehemiah did not give up. He continued his work until the wall was completed in only... 52 days. In 52 days, they completed the whole wall around the Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. Oops, let's go back. There is something over here. It says their enemies and the surrounding nations lost heart, realizing the work had been done by the help of God. And finally, the enemies, they gave up. They, are, they said, we cannot do anything. And they gave up trying to um, stop jewish people to rebuild the wall and so the wall was complete now hooray that's the end of the book of nehemiah but let's look at today's lesson we have a few hands raised we'll start with hitash nehemiah reading by example king artaxerxes made nehemiah governor of judah and as governor, Nehemiah and his relatives were allowed to ask the people of the land for food and money. However, Nehemiah did not take money from the poor or ask them for help because they were struggling to survive. On the little they had, Nehemiah worked on the wall like everyone else, and he even fed 150 people and their leaders every day. In just over 50 days, the wall was finished and Nehemiah's enemies realized that the work of rebuilding the wall had been done with the help of the Lord. Yes, it took them 52 days to be exact. Now, why should a leader be like a servant? We always talk about servant leadership in our school, right? How, yes, uh, well, there are many different ways, many different views about being a leader. One of them is servant leadership. And the best example of a leader who is like a servant is Jesus. When, remember, he washed his disciples' feet, he said, you be like that. If you want to be a leader, you have to serve people just like Jesus did. And that's why, oh, let's read, okay? Who wants to read? Let's take a look. Um, Hansana, would you like to read? Yes. All right, please read. Have you ever played follow the leader? What is everyone supposed to do? The followers must watch the leader and do everything exactly the way the leader does it because that is, that is what followers do. In real life, being a le leader is a responsible job that should not be taken lightly because people watch their leader and follow his on her example. Neymar knew the importance of being a good leader so he didn't demand food and money from the people. He knew that the lead that the other leaders who respect him would soon be doing the same, taking food and money from people who are struggling was not right. Neymar had come to uh, Jerusalem Jerusalem to help them, not to have an easy life and boss everyone around. Jesus had the same attitude. He, the king of kings, humbled himself and wiggling, willingly willingly became a servant so that he could come and live among us and help rebuild our lives. That's right. Philippians. Let's read the verse for today together. Ready? Go. 
But you are not blind. You are not blind. It's dead. Let us go. Yeah, this is actually something very different. Everybody else in the whole world will tell you absolutely opposite. But here he says, the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves. Have you ever seen presidents walking around and serving people or washing their feet? Imagine that. A president of the country no. comes to our school and tells everybody to sit down and brings a little pot with water and starts washing your feet. That's unimaginable. That will never happen, right? In this world, the powerful people there, the rich there, they have money, they have the authority. They tell people what to do and other people listen to them. Some you leaders mean? are they are like they think that they own the world and like they are high headed. That's right. Yeah. Um what Jesus told us it's absolutely opposite. He said if you want to be a leader, you have to serve people. You have to love them, you have to try to help them, you have to be there for them when they need you. And so if you ever become a leader, be leaders like that. It's going to be difficult because it's opposite of what the world does. Anyway, let me stop the recording.